C I E T N C E R T presents audiobook of geography for class 7 entitled our environment this is the chapter 3 our changing earth from page 12 to page 19 page 12 the lithosphere is broken into a number of plates known as the lithospheric plates you will be surprised to know that these plates move around very slowly just a few millimeters each year this is because of the movement of the molten magma inside the earth the molten magma inside the earth moves in a circular manner as shown in the activity the movement of these plates causes changes on the surface of the earth the earth movements are divided on the basis of the forces which cause them the forces which act in the interior of the earth are called as endogenic forces and the forces that work on the surface of the earth are called as exogenic forces below this we have a diagram representing earth movements the two broad categories endogenic forces and exogenic forces have many subcategories which are clearly mentioned endogenic forces are sudden forces and they are responsible for earthquake volcano and landslides also they are diastrophic forces building mountains whereas exogenic forces are erosional and depositional and they represent river wind sea waves glaciers the evolution of landforms is summarized in this diagram also on the left side of the page we have two boxes the one asking for an activity take a small colored paper pellet and put it in a beaker half filled with water place the beaker on a tripod stand and heat it as the water warms up you will observe that the paper pellet is moving upward along with the warm layers of water and then sinks back along with the cooler layers of water the molten magma inside the earth moves in a similar manner we have two tiny pictures within this box of activity in which a beaker half filled with water is shown on a tripod stand and is being heated also we see the paper pellet moving upward along with the warm layers of water and then sinking back along with the cooler layers the other tiny picture represents the movement of the molten magma inside the earth we also have a glossary section on the left side of the page lithospheric plates the earth's crust consists of several large and some small rigid irregularly shaped plates or slabs which carry continents and the ocean floor endogenic forces sometimes produce sudden movements and at the other times produce slow movements sudden movements like earthquakes and volcanoes cause mass destruction over the surface of the earth page 13 a volcano is a vent or opening in the earth's crust through which molten material erupts suddenly we have a figure below this text representing a volcano we can see things like mantle crust magma chamber lava vent crater gases and ash as the volcano erupts also we have a section about word origin endo means inside exo means outside so combining these with genic genic means the origin we get the two words endogenic exogenic there's another column for an activity take a container fill it with water and close it with a lid Put the water to boil. Now put some peas, spoon, 
and beads on top on the lid. What do you notice? As the water boils, the lid begins to shake. The things which you have put on the lid also vibrate. The beads roll down and the spoon vibrates to make a sound. In the same manner, the earth vibrates when an earthquake occurs. Do you know? There are three types of earthquake waves. 1. P waves or longitudinal waves. 2. S waves or transverse waves. 3. L waves or surface waves. Try to find out the properties of these waves from an encyclopedia. Similarly, when the lithospheric plates move, the surface of the earth vibrates. The vibrations can travel all round the earth. These vibrations are called earthquakes. The place in the crust where the movement starts is called the focus. The place on the surface above the focus is called the epicenter. Vibrations travel outwards from the epicenter as waves. Greatest damage is usually closest to the epicenter and the strength of the earthquake decreases away from the center. Below this on the page we have a picture representing origin of an earthquake. We can clearly see focus. This is where the earthquake occurs. It is the origin of the seismic energy. We also see plate boundary. We also see the epicenter and we can see that seismic waves radiate out in all directions. Page 14 Although earthquakes cannot be predicted, the impact can certainly be minimized if we are prepared beforehand. Some common earthquake prediction methods adopted locally by people include studying animal behavior, fish in the ponds get agitated, snakes come to the surface. To the left corner on the top, we have a picture of the destruction caused by an earthquake in Gujarat. We can clearly see tall buildings completely destructed. Do you know? An earthquake is measured with a machine called a seismograph. The magnitude of the earthquake is measured on the Richter scale. An earthquake of 2.0 or less can be felt only a little. An earthquake over 5.0 can cause damage from things falling. A 6.0 or higher magnitude is considered very strong and 7.0 is classified as a major earthquake. Below this we can see the picture of a seismograph. Earthquake, a case study. Below this we have the picture of a newspaper which has the headlines that appeared in the newspapers after the earthquake. Numbers are written next to each of the headlines and below is an activity. 1. Read the Earthquake, a case study, given in the form of headlines that appeared in the newspapers after the quake. Arrange the events in the right sequence of their happening. The headlines and the matter in the newspaper is like this. 1. Earthquake hits Bhuj. A massive earthquake measuring 6.9 on Richter scale hit Bhuj town on 26th January 2001. 2. School worst affected. At least 971 students and 31 teachers are feared to have lost their lives following the collapse of school buildings. 3. Bhuj relief effort blighted. Three days after the quake, concern rose about food, blankets and medical supplies not reaching everyone. 4. Destruction of Bhuj Phone lines, water pipelines and power stations transmission lines were knocked out. 5. Fire in the city. Hundreds of fires started as charcoal, cookers overturned. 6. Emergency declared in quake zone. 
the President declares a state of emergency. 7. CM's appeal to the Centre. Gujarat appeals for financial help. The Chief Minister of Gujarat has launched an appeal for the Centre to deal with the disaster. Below this we have activity. 1. Read the Earthquake A Case Study given in the form of headlines that appeared in the newspapers after the quake. Arrange the events in the right sequence of their happening. 2. Imagine if a quake suddenly shook in the middle of the school day. Where would you go for safety? Earthquake Preparedness Where to take shelter during an earthquake? Safe spot Under a kitchen counter table or desk, against an inside corner or wall. Stay away from fireplaces, areas around chimneys, windows that shatter including mirrors and picture frames. Be prepared. Spread awareness amongst your friends and family members and face any disaster confidently. Page 15 major landforms. The landscape is being continuously worn away by two processes, weathering and erosion. Weathering is the breaking up of the rocks on the earth's surface. Erosion is the wearing away of the landscape by different agents like water, wind and ice. The eroded material is carried away or transported by water, wind, etc., and eventually deposited. This process of erosion and deposition create different landforms on the surface of the earth. On the right side of the page we have a column asking, Do you know? There are thousands of small waterfalls in the world. The highest waterfall is Angel Falls of Venezuela in South America. The other waterfalls are Niagara Falls, located on the border between Canada and USA in North America, and Victoria Falls on the borders of Zambia and Zimbabwe in Africa. Below this we have a small picture of the Niagara Falls. Work of a River The running water in the river erodes the landscape. When the river tumbles at steep angle, over very hard rocks or down a steep valley side, it forms a waterfall. Below this we have a diagrammatic representation of waterfall. We see some hard rock, we see softer rock undercut by the power of the water and we see a lot of water gushing down. As the river enters the plain, it twists and turns forming large bends known as meanders. Due to continuous erosion and deposition along the sides of the meander, the ends of the meander loop come closer and closer. In due course of time, the meander loop cuts off from the river and forms a cut-off lake, also called an oxbow lake. At times, the river overflows its banks. This leads to the flooding of the neighbouring areas. As it floods, it deposits layers of fine soil and other material called sediments along its banks. This leads to the formation of a flat fertile flood plain. The raised banks are called levees. On the right side of this text we see a picture of features made by a river in a flood plain. We can see Oxbow Lake, we can see Meander and Levees besides Flood Plains. As the river approaches the sea, the speed of the flowing water decreases and the river begins to break up into a number of streams called distributaries. Page 16 the river becomes so slow that it begins to deposit its load. Each distributary forms its own mouth. 
the collection of sediments from all the mouths forms a delta. To the right side, we can see a picture of a delta. A main river is shown and its distributaries. On the left side, we have a suggestion for activity titled, Let's Do. Find out the names of a few rivers of the world that form a delta. Work of sea waves. The erosion and deposition of the sea waves gives rise to coastal landforms. Sea waves continuously strike at the rocks. Cracks develop. Over time, they become larger and wider. Thus, hollow like caves are formed on the rocks. They are called sea caves. As these cavities become bigger and bigger, only the roof of the caves remain, thus forming sea arches. Further, erosion breaks the roof and only walls are left. These wall-like features are called stacks. The steep rocky coast rising almost vertically above seawater is called sea cliff. The sea waves deposit sediments along the shores forming beaches. On the left side we have a picture of the features made by sea waves. We can see stack, sea arch as well as sea cave. Work of ice Glaciers are rivers of ice which too erode the landscape by bulldozing soil and stones to expose the solid rock below. Glaciers carve out deep hollows there. As the ice melts, they get filled up with water and become beautiful lakes in the mountains. The material carried by the glacier such as rocks, big and small, sand and silt gets deposited. These deposits form glacial moraines. On the bottom left of the page, we have the picture of a glacier. Page 17 Work of Wind Have you ever visited a desert? Try to collect some pictures of sand dunes. An active agent of erosion and deposition in the desert says wind. In deserts, you can see rocks in the shape of a mushroom, commonly called mushroom rocks. Winds erode the lower section of the rock more than the upper part. Therefore, such rocks have narrower base and wider top. When the wind blows, it lifts and transports sand from one place to another. When it stops blowing, the sand falls and gets deposited in low hill-like structures. These are called sand dunes. When the grains of sand are very fine and light, the wind can carry it over very long distances. When such sand is deposited in large areas, it is called loess. Large deposits of loess is found in China. On the left side, we have the picture of sand dunes. Exercises 1. Answer the following questions. Part 1. Why do the plates move? Part 2. What are exogenic and endogenic forces? Part 3. What is erosion? Part 4. How are flood plains formed? Part 5. What are sand dunes? Part 6. How are beaches formed? Part 7. What are oxbow lakes? 2. Tick the correct answer. Part 1. Which is not an erosional feature of sea waves? A. Cliff B. Beach C. Sea cave Part 2. The depositional feature of a glacier is A. Flood plain B. Beach C. Moraine Part 3. Which is caused by the sudden movements of the earth? A. Volcano B. Folding C. Flood plain 
Part 4. Mushroom rocks are found in A. Deserts B. River valleys C. Glaciers Part 5. Oxbow lakes are found in A. Glaciers B. River valleys C. Deserts Page 18 3. Match the following. 1. Glacier 2. Meanders 3. Beach 4. Sand dunes 5. Waterfall 6. Earthquake The choices are A. Seashore B. Mushroom rock C. River of ice D. Rivers E. Vibrations of earth F. Sea cliff G. Hard bed rock H. Deserts 4. Give reasons Part 1. Some rocks have a shape of a mushroom. Part 2. Flood plains are very fertile. Part 3. Sea caves are turned into stacks. Part 4. Buildings collapse due to earthquakes. 5. Activity. Observe the photographs given below. These are various features made by a river. Identify them and also tell whether they are erosional or depositional or landforms formed by both. Below this we have a table with three columns and three rows. The first column has the heading Photograph. In this we see three different photographs. Columns 2 and 3 have the headings name of the feature and type, that is erosional or depositional or both. Both columns 2 and 3 are empty and are supposed to be filled by you. Page 19 6. For fun Solve the crossword puzzle with the help of given clues. Below this we have a crossword puzzle and some clues are mentioned below. There are two different boxes. The first one reads a cross. The clues are Number 2. Loop like the bend of a river. 4. Solid form of water. 7. Moving mass of ice. 9. Sudden descent of water in the bed of a river. 11. Natural cavity on weak rocks formed by action of waves. 12. Embankment on a river that keeps it in its channel. 13. Large body of sea water. 14. Dry area where sand dunes are found. 15. Small hill of sand caused by the action of the wind. 16. Flat plain formed by river deposits during time of flood. The second box has the heading down and reads 1. Rise and fall of water caused by friction of wind on water surface. 3. Flow of water in a channel. 5. Steep perpendicular face of a rock along a sea coast. 6. Debris of boulder and coarse material carried by glacier. 8. Crescent-shaped lake formed by a meandering river. 10. Fine sand deposited by the action of the wind. 13. Isolated mass of rising steep rock near a coastline. 14. Alluvial tracts of land formed by the river deposits at the mouth of a river. The chapter 3 of total 9 chapters of the book ends here. Narrator Gaurav Marva Production Assistant Shanu Muksim Producer Vimalesh Chaudhary Presented by CIET NCERT New Delhi, India